I've talked about how current is related to charge. Um, in particular, I've talked about how 1 ampere is equal to 1 coulomb over 1 second. Now, I want to talk about the definitions of a coulomb and an ampere now. Let's um, let's think about this based on based on this relation. So um, okay, let me just clear this up a bit. If I if I look at um, if I look at this relation, if I look at this relation, I can say something like um, one ampere uh, is the current when one coulomb flows from for one second. So let, let me write that down. One ampere. So now I I am exploring how we would uh, define, meaning to, to give a meaning to the 1 ampere, to give a specific meaning to it. I can say something like 1 ampere is the uh, current when 1 coulomb One coulomb of charge, one coulomb of charge flows for one second. Okay. Now, what about what about one coulomb? Right now, let let uh, let me try that. I can say something like one coulomb, one coulomb is the charge is the charge that flows in one second when the current and the current is one ampere. Now, if if you look at these two sentences, you might see a problem. You are do, it's like a circular argument. Okay, it's like a bit like saying that happy means joyful and joyful means happy. I actually saw this in a dictionary when I was a child. It doesn't really help. It doesn't really help. So we need something to break break this circle, right? We can't just say just define an ampere using coulomb and then define a coulomb using ampere. There has to be a way out. There has to be some other way of uh, 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 defining or giving meaning to either ampere or coulomb. Now the way it is done uh, for for the SI units, right? If you recall the SI unit, this is an international, basically a, in, a international system of units agreed by uh, um, through discussion by many scientists over over the years. If you recall uh, an earlier, uh, very early video um, that I did. This SI units um, include let's see a number of base units, including kilogram, meters, seconds, uh, Kelvin, and it includes mole, and it includes ampere. Right, and there's one more uh, called candela, which uh, we shan't be using um, for now. So. Let me just 
just use uh, I'll just be using these six most of the time. So ampere was actually defined as a base unit. Now, uh, it's a base unit. When we say a base unit, right? I've not actually, I never actually explained what we mean by a base unit. Now, basically, um, it means that uh, is is uh, is in a way a uh, um, a way of expressing units that scientists have agreed upon um, that um, we want to think about all other units as being uh, derived from these these six units that means that if you have any other units in physics you can actually express them uh, in some way maybe using algebra in terms of, of these units so as a simple example um, let's say uh, Coulomb, right? If I talk about Coulomb, if you look at this expression, you see that I can express uh, Coulomb in terms of uh, ampere times second. Just move the one second over to, to the other side and I would have, I would actually have um, down here, all right, if I just rearrange this, I get one Coulomb is equal to one ampere second, one ampere second. So in that sense, I I can express Coulomb in terms of ampere and second. Okay. So now, but in addition to to uh, to this idea of a, of a base unit that that we want to express other units in terms of the base units, there's something more fundamental about uh, something. There's something else, right? Uh, so some other meaning involved when when we talk about using this as the base units and the meaning is that 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 is actually that there's actually a way uh maybe there must actually be a way to define each of these base units um uh by themselves like okay if i say one ampere is the base unit and i want to express say coulomb in in terms of ampere meaning that uh if you like i want to i, I want to use this Right, I'm. I'm good. I want to use this as a definition for Coulomb. That Coulomb is the charge that flows in one second when the current is one ampere. Okay, so that's the preferred way of uh, doing things when 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 we use SI units. So fine. If this is what how I want to define uh, the Coulomb, it means that I can't define an ampere like that. I can't. I can no longer say that uh, an ampere. Is defined as a Coulomb divided by one second. Okay, because if I do that, I will have a circular argument. So there has to be another way to define ampere, and and so together with defining each of these uh, units as a base unit, uh, this international uh, maybe group of scientists, all right, they have to decide on a way to define ampere itself. And each of these actually. So, but for now, I just talk about ampere. So, how exactly is ampere defined? If we don't define it as one coulomb, of, if we if we can't use this meaning of one coulomb of charge per second, I mean, it is one coulomb of charge per second. It's, but it's just that we need another way to to define it, which is not in terms of coulomb. So, I will. Um, that's what I I want to explain uh, now. Uh, at least briefly, so let me clear this part up. Oops. Okay, so The way um, ampere is defined is, is like this. Think about a wire. Think about two wires actually. Two wires. Now, these two wires, think about two wires that are one meter apart. Okay, and suppose now that um, 
in each wire, there is a current. There is a current flowing, the same current actually that, that flows. Right? I'll call it the current I. Now, when a current flows, when a current flows, it will produce a magnetic field around it. So this is um, the effect of electromagnetism, which I'll talk about uh, in later videos. And it's the kind of effect that uh, allows us to make, for example, electromagnets. If, if, it, if we take this wire and turn it into a coil, we get an electromagnet. So when a current flows, there would always be an electric field around it. Now this electric field around this wire, uh, this current, for example, it would extend to all the space nearby, including here. So this current, for example, would would feel the magnetic field from this current. Now, when a current, when this current goes through a magnetic field, uh, in this case coming from there, when this current goes through a magnetic field, it will experience a force. It will experience a force. So that's another effect of electromagnetism, and this is the effect uh, that gives us motor, right? This is how motor works when, uh, by by making a current going through a magnetic field, the 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 force would cause the wire to move. Okay, so that's the basic uh, principles in a in an electric motor. So when we have two currents, when we have two parallel wires, each of these will produce a magnetic force on the other wire. And the effect is that the two parallel currents going in the same direction will attract each other. They will actually attract each other. So they will attract each other with a certain force. With a certain force. Okay. So we'll learn more about this in a later session. But for now, for now, what I like to uh, describe is, is that this setup is used to define an ampere. So how does that how does that work? Right. Imagine increasing these two currents. Right? We are supposed to keep the two currents the same. In, imagine increasing those two currents, then the force of attraction would increase. Okay, the more current, the more force from the magnetic field. Now, just so imagine slowly increasing the current, just very slowly from, from zero current, when there's no force, we slowly increase it until the value of the force, until the value of the force is equal to 2 times 10 to the minus 7 of a Newton. So that that force as well, equal and opposite, 2 times 10 to the minus 7 of a Newton. A very small force. Right? Just a very small force. When the current, when the current is um, enough, right, it's just enough to produce exactly this Newton, uh, this uh, force, this this value of the force, then that current is defined to be one ampere. So that's how one ampere is defined. One ampere is defined as the current that will give this two times ten to the minus seven newton of force in this setup with, with those two parallel wires. Oh, um, one more detail that I I should have added. The two wires. I'm, I'm ref I need to talk about um, the two each of this wire having a length of one meter right so this refers to the force acting on a length of one meter of the wire so this is how one ampere is defined now if you're seeing this for the first time if you're seeing this for the first time it would look very strange I mean, why why this setup and why 2 times 10 to the minus 7? Why this number? Now there is there is a reason. The reason is that this definition um, would make 
the equations relating the, this force to the current and it will also make other uh, uh, physics equations simpler to write but we would not be going into those equations very much um, for, uh, for for this set of videos so for now for now um, let's just accept that this is how uh, the group of scientists some years ago uh, has agreed upon when they make up this this SI system of units. Right, when they define ampere, they also must define a way they, when they uh, decide on using the ampere as a base unit, they, they must also think of a way of defining ampere itself. Not in terms of coulombs, but in terms of something else. So that, that's that. Um, but let me uh, uh, before I finish off, let me go back to the to the definition that one ampere one ampere is equal to oops, one ampere is equal to one coulomb divided by one second. Now this. It's just, as I said, it's just a way that was decided by a group of scientists um, some years ago. But it doesn't have to be the only way. And in fact, as of now, uh, the year 2014, uh, maybe uh, a group of scientists, uh, maybe a new group, uh, is trying to decide on maybe a new way of defining uh, Ampere. Or the SI units. So instead of defining it this way, there is actually another, uh, maybe simple way to do it. If you think about defining in terms of a Coulomb. Now, if you think about what Coulomb is, Coulomb is a measure of electric charge. And we know that electric charge, when we think of electric charge, we think of maybe electrons and maybe protons right but electrons electrons is uh, is kind of more familiar we think of electrons flowing around a circuit we think of electronics you hear the word electronics and, and it's all about electrons uh, controlling electrons in very clever ways to make very clever electronic devices now an electron an electron has a charge. The charge of one electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus um, 19 of a coulomb. And that has been measured very accurately over, over the past century. So actually, we can also define coulomb in terms of the number of electrons because the charge of an electron is something fundamental. It's, it's something that doesn't change. All electrons have the same at the same charge. So if we think about defining it in terms of the number of electrons, let's think about how many um, electrons are there in a coulomb. To find that, right, the number of electrons in one coulomb is one coulomb divided by the charge of an electron. That would be 1.6 um, Let's see. Now I'm going to use the more accurate uh, uh, value of the electronic charge, 1.602. So you don't see this very often. Okay, 1.602. And this would give me the number of electrons. It would be 6.25 times 10 to the power 18. So, and this means that there's no reason why we can't define one coulomb as 2.65 times 10 to the power of 18 um, electrons. I mean, much the same way that it, if you uh, remember from from an earlier video, I've defined and I've explained how the Avogadro constant Na is defined as 
is defined as the number 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. Right, the number of atoms in in 12 grams of carbon 12 uh, of the carbon 12 material. Right, so that is really not so different. And as of now, um, as as far as I uh, understand from reading the news of science. Uh, a group of scientists will, will be meeting this year in the year 2014 to decide whether they should from now on define an ampere to define an ampere as as um, a current when 6.25 times 10 to the power of 18 electrons go past a point in one second that's an equally good um, definition right so we have to wait and see maybe next year we we will know whether the si units will be redefined <laughs>